Hi everybody, my name is Chris Blankenhorn. Um, to start this off, I have to give a huge, 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 huge thank you to Michael Dennis um, from, I guess he's probably, pro I guess Michael, they are probably technically Green Party of New York or North Carolina right now, uh, but Michael was Jill Stein's systems manager and also a co-chair of the Young Eco Socialists, which is the youth caucus of the Green Party of the United States. Um, and Michael also served as a steering committee member uh, with me uh, last year until they had to resign because they got a job at Nation Builder. Um, but Michael exposed me to a huge number of tools, um, whether they be for more efficient communication or um, you know things we can use in our parties and our campaigns to co connect with people. Um, but one of the big things I got, and Michael was a big reason why, um, but one of the big things I got out of my term working with National is this kind of overview of what, how we are operating as a party and some things that we might be able to do better, um, some things that might be able to um, you know, kind of change how we do this kind of stuff. So I want to start off with what this pres presentation isn't. It's not a walkthrough of any of these tools. Um, you know, that I, I've got a whole bunch of things that we're going to dump in an hour real quick. Um, I would be absolutely happy to work with people, to work with locals, to work with anyone within the party to figure out how to get an actual walkthrough and a real demonstration on specific tools. Um, but this is very much meant to do a, a data dump. Um, and it's very, I'm going to skip how we do things now. So I'm not going to get bogged down in should we nation build or shouldn't we nation build uh, We can use a whole strategy session on that if we wanted to, I'm sure. Um, so that's not what that is. What this is is kind of a speed dump of various tools I've been exposed to. Um, some of them are mutually exclusive. Some of them are not. Some of them are, are you know, complementary to things that we're doing. Um, some of them will be useful at all levels of the party, some would only be useful to a campaign or only useful to a state party. Um, I I'm going to try to provide some examples of each kind of tool. They are not a, the, all of them. There are other things, um, like Rich said in his presentation, this is something I'm working on. I plan on doing it for the Youth Caucus and, try, and hopefully the CCC and trying to develop this into something that the party can use as a resource. Um, I'm going to try to spend the first half of this Illinois Green Party focused uh, workshop looking at um, communication systems, listservs, kind of how we could do some things different. But I want to make sure that we get to the second half, which are tools that we can plug in right now, how we're doing them, you know, how we're doing things now, and get moving. Um, things that can help us in the now. So I'm not going to try, I'm going to try to keep us from getting too bogged down in the hypothetical, what if we change how we do things completely. Um, because while an advocate for that, that's not an hour long thing. Um, it was upside down. So first I'm going to talk about communications tools, specifically video and streaming options. Um, we have, in our conference call systems we use now offer some collaboration tools. Um, some things like that, even though they do, very few people use them. Um, you know, I, I know freeconferencecall.com has a, a nice control panel where you can chat and you can screen share and you can do all these things. Maybe one person, two person on a call will ever use it. Um, so we're not utilizing things how they are. Um, when it comes to how we do things, we do, everyone who's been involved in the party, I'm sure has been on a conference call. <coughs> Personally, I spend most of my time playing guitar on conference calls, if I'm not facilitating. It is an extremely disconnecting and dehumanizing <coughs> and zoning out, encouraging medium of communication. Um, you know, we can't see each other, we can't react to each <coughs> other. Um, it, it's often very nonlinear. Um, and so that's one of the reasons that I like talking about video streaming. Um, is because we can use it to an alternative to conference calls. We can get face-to-face, -face, you know, interactions in a digital in a digital space. It's more humanizing. It bring, in my experience, it brings us together more. Um, you know, the few times we did digital retreats with the steering committee, it was like you smiled when you saw the people that you talk to every week but never see. 
Um, and it was, it, was a, it was actually, it had a whole, a really big impact on how the meetings actually went. You know, the culture of the meeting. There was a way less sniping, way less, you know, we were all a lot more um, friendly with each other. These services also give us opportunities to do things like live streaming. Um, you know, alternative media is very, very important. I know Greens have long tried to create their own media. Um, these tools make it really easy. Um, once I've set up my Blue Jeans account, which we'll talk about later, but once we've, I set up my Blue Jeans account to, my, to the Youth Caucus Facebook, all I have to do is click one button and it will be ready to live stream and click another to go. Um, and it will go to the Facebook page and, be, and you know, work very well. It used to be you had to use third party services to do all that. Um, it's now gotten really, really, really easy. Um, the same thing for doing interviews. Um, uh, if people have seen like Jill's GNN um, or Tony Smith's GNN, the battling GNNs, um, they do lots of interviews where you could, you know, you're switching screens. It can be very professional and it can be done very easily with streaming services and a little practice. Um, it also helps, in my experience, to bring people into meetings uh, from a distance more. I've had meetings where we set the phone in a bowl in the middle and like you're on speakerphone and maybe you'll get to talk, but just listen. Um, as opposed to setting an iPad up where we can see them, where they can type into a chat to get involved more. Um, it, it's, it tends to connect us better. Um, so I've got four options that I've looked at. These are again not all. Some of them cost money, some of them don't. Um, some of them I have more experience with than others, but I've used them all. So the first two, Blue Jeans and Zoom, are the two I've used the most. Uh, the Youth Caucus used Blue Jeans. Uh, the Lavender Caucus uses Zoom. That's just different parts of the party kind of trying things out and see how they like them. For me, the, while there is a free version of Zoom, most green parties are gonna need uh, a paid version. Uh, $15 a month is usually about pretty good for what a, green, a local green party or a campaign is gonna need. But that's going to get you multi-person video chat over 45 minutes. The free version is going to list, limit you to a 45-minute call. Um, beyond that, for Blue Jeans and Zoom, it's a toss-up for me. They both they both are powerful tools. They both are really good. Google Hangouts is a big free option. Um, I've used it a lot doing um, interviews for a podcast I used to do. One thing I will say about Google Hangouts is it has a really good control center. You can lock who's on screen, which is amazing when someone when you have multiple speakers and someone's making noise or has a noisy mic. Um, you can mute people, you can volume up, volume down. Uh, they all have some kind of controls, but Google Hangouts offers a really strong control center. Um, it specifically streams to YouTube through Google, through Google Hangouts on Air. Um, <coughs> but Zoom and BlueJeans can both very easily be set up just to go to any social media site or your website, can be embedded really easy. Um, Skype is another common one. I used to use Skype all the time when Office 360 came out and they expected us to now pay for every service every month in bundles. Uh, a lot of pieces of Skype started becoming premium. Um, you know, having big calls, calling in with a phone, um, those things used to be premium. Uh, Google Hangouts and Zoom, you can pay to add so that someone can still call in on a phone just like normal. Blue, to, Blue Jeans, that's built in. Um, so we have people call in just like a normal conference call to our Youth Caucus Education calls all the time. Um, so it still does work with the old system, uh, but it allows chat breakouts and all kinds of screen sharing and all kinds of things like that um, that can go on, that can happen, you know, for people who want to use the other option. Um, the other area of communication that I kind of see in some of these, like Slack, that big S, the Illinois Green Party has a Slack channel. I logged into it yesterday, it's been months since anyone posted, and that's personally my experience with Slack. Um, my experience with Slack is that it's a great tool that no one's really using. Um, but these are tools basically that can supplement our email lists. Um, all of these tools are encrypted, um, which is a big deal um, for a lot of communication. Um, Slack lets you do threads and channels and have a lot clearer dis you know, discussion. instead of. Here is one email thread on this huge topic. You can start breaking things down. You can break down into projects. Um, we've got, I think, three. We've got a general. We've got an exec chat. We've got a, a national committee member Slack chat. 
Um, so we've broken it down through the ILGP stuff. Um, Slack is often used for kind of rapid team communication. Um, on the Jill, for example, on the Jill campaign, I know their meet social media team used Slack heavily. Um, this happened, we need to get a thing out, and you just see a stream of chats as they are brainstorming, figuring out exactly what that message is, and getting it out. In an email, in an email list, I mean, sometimes in our lists, for some reason or another, it can take days for something to show up. Um, you know, it's just the inefficiency of these new, of old systems and free systems that we tend to use. Um, so that kind of rapid mm -hmm. communication through email, or you know, if it's connected to my Gmail, my Apple phone doesn't like Gmail and it only updates it about every 15 minutes. I don't get an immediate update on my Gmail. My Hotmail I do, but that Gmail it has to wait. Um, so Slack allows some very rapid response things. Um, some good uses for it would be social media teams, canvassing teams, that kind of thing, where if everybody's not, and if, if your young people are the ones doing these things, you know we've got it attached to our hip, it's gonna buzz like a text message, and we're gonna look at it. We can't help ourselves. Um, so, <laughs> you know, but it, it gives you <coughs> active notifications like any messenger service. Um, this thing keeps turning upside down. Slack it has a free version. Um, it goes up to, I think, 10,000 messages. Um, so for most, we're, we have a free one for Illinois Green Party. For the most part, for the most part, it's going to be good for most Green Parties. Um, you know, it, for something like the state party, it might do us good to think about a paid one eventually because it allows searchability, it allows um, kind of archiving things, um, and, and a long, long, long term work for a campaign. I don't know if you're going to go over 10,000 Slack messages, and when the campaign's over, the campaign's over. Um, but for a party, I could see uh, us eventually hitting that $7 a month cost um, over years or over, or if we start using it effectively rel relatively quickly. Um, another one that's really important, and I think everyone should be using it on a daily basis, is Signal. So Signal is from the Whisper Foundation, which is a not for, an open source not-for-profit, and it is an <coughs> encrypted texting and calling app. Um, in the Green Party of the United States, all the staff uses it. So when I needed access to the Green Party's YouTube to host a candidate forum, David Doonan, our tech uh, staff member, could actually text me the password without any concerns of security. It's end-to-end -end encrypted, which means when it leaves my phone, it leaves encrypted, and it's not encrypted and it's not de-encrypted until the person receives it. Slack or Signal has no <coughs> idea what is said. It has no way of knowing or looking at what you're doing. And when they say, when you look, ask them about privacy, they say, they can come subpoena us all they want. We don't have anything. Um, it's all done between phones. You can change security keys and things like that to update it. Um, I, so I use it with the Green Party to talk to staff all the time. It's their main communication tool. I use it with, in my activist circles to talk to people all the time. Uh, most of my activists back and forth has left any kind of non-encrypted uh, communication for signal. Um, same for some of those calls. They're, they're going out end to end encrypted. So the sound quality is a little eh, um, but it's absolutely encrypted. Me and my wife use it. Just on a day to day, hey honey. Um, you know, it, I'm re very much personally trying to move every all of my communications over to it. Um, GroupMe is another um, kind of Slack-esque option. Um, I added it, I've never used it, I use Signal, but I added it because I know a lot of activists who do. Um, but it's a similar service, it's kind of one of those toss up what's your flavor type thing. Um, both of those also have browser based things, or web, or computer based things, so that you can have the same encryption on your computer communications. Um, Signal lets you do kind of send documents and images as well. So this is the big one. Um, this project management so services are kind of the key to if we make major changes to how we do our work, something like this is going to be involved. Um, the Youth Caucus specifically <coughs> uses uh, Basecamp, um, but there's other ones that I've used through other organizations. So these are t platforms for team and project management. 
Um, you can assign tasks, you can have deadlines, there's all, there's chats, there's message boards, there's calendars, there's events, there's to-do lists, there's all kinds of things. Um, why we moved to Basecamp in the Youth Caucus, we now no longer do anything via email lists. Um, we no longer do anything via any kind of group message or chat. Because what we found was that the email lists were inefficient for us, for some of the reasons I discussed earlier. Um, they were inefficient for us, but also, so we, what we ended up doing was doing a lot of organizing via Facebook Messenger, because we're on it. And so, I mean, I can go through group chats on my phone where they're still organizing, not through the Youth Caucus, but through different parts of the party on Facebook Messenger, and it's horrible. You can't search it. Like, I'll be at work, yeah. and they'll have a discussion, and they'll mention me, and I have no way. It's, I just have to sit there and scroll on my phone or my computer until I find it. It's not indexable. It's, it's yeah. one of the least efficient ways we could possibly communicate with each other. And then it's attached to the most, like, time-wasting thing in the world of Facebook. <laughs> so not only am I talking on Facebook, but then my notification is popping up, and I'm checking to see what someone says, mm -hmm. and I'm coming back. Oh, and this time Messenger dropped the whole four paragraphs that I wrote because it crashed. And mm -hmm. so now I've got to restart typing something that never should have been typed into Messenger in the first place. Mm -hmm. Basecamp provides us a single, isolated place to do our work and place to organize. Um, it, it allows clear tasks and deadlines, um, rapid notifications like Slack, it buzzes anytime someone says, does something that I'm involved with. Um, and it allows you to kind of manage and isolate multiple teams. Um, Basecamp, the big thing about it is cost. Um, I will say, one, as a kind of Here's why you spend this money. Um, in 2017, the Youth Caucus was given $1,000. Every caucus was given $1,000 by the National Party. It was a, like, here's a gift. It's right after 20, uh, an election season, and we're being dumb, myself included, and we're flush with money for just a second, so we're going to dump some of it. Um, the Youth Caucus used that money to buy base camp. Um, part of that was a dues transition to help us bring in regular money, um, a real focus on reorienting our organization. Um, but we took that $1,000, invested it in Basecamp, and raised something like $5,000 last year, which is absolutely unheard of for a caucus <coughs> in the Green Party. Um, part of it is dues, part of, part of it was active social media organization, part of it is people pay dues because they can't get in to organize with us without it. Um, I have a standing offer to gr two young Greens that if you can't afford our $5 per semester dues or our $10 per semester dues, I'll cover people for their first six months to get them rolled in. So we're not going to keep people out, um, but by using our dues to pay for something that actually provides us a service um, has been a big, influ a big inspiration for people to actually pay their dues and, help and get involved. Because sending us a message on Facebook, you're going to be told, already asked, are you on Basecamp? Because that's where you can see the four dozen different tasks that we need done, done right now, from social media management to web management to writing articles to, we've got everything there. That's where you can get plugged into the finance committee or the education committee or the outreach committee. Um, so <coughs> Basecamp works on everything. Um, some of the buzzes that are happening have actually been base camp. Um, so good, people are doing work. Um, it's got chats, message boards, check-ins. Every single day I get a message on base camp that says, please share our social media posts. That's all it is. Asking me to go to our Facebook and share something. Um, I happen to be the caucus social media manager right now, so it's useless for me. But everybody's getting it. Um, that kind of check-in. Um, document sharing like Google Docs is all located and it syncs with Google Docs. Um, to-do lists are great. Um, for example, we ha I have a to-do list right now that is, we're trying to make a list of every college in Illinois. Um, and Ooh. so we're, and that's the goal for every state for campus organizing focus, is to actually start getting the list. Um, so I have a task assigned to me, as does, I think, Mary, as does Mary Jane from uh, Champaign, 
to do to get help compile <clears throat> that list. Um, most of these services offer a lot of the same stuff. Um, if you'll notice sort of on, on the far side is something called Freedcamp. Freedcamp and Basecamp are essentially the same thing. I'm not sure of the history, but I'm pretty sure it was a split over differences in opinion on how to run the company. Um, Basecamp does a very flat rate, $99 a month, no matter how many users you have. Freedcamp is free for a lot of things. It is a very powerful tool, and if the Illinois Green Party were to try to switch, I would suggest we start there because of the free aspect. Um, where they get you is they have paid features that then go to per user. So if you've got a thousand people, you can use all the free stuff, but if you want to get that issue tracker, now you're going to start paying per user per month. And now we're priced out. <laughs> um, so, you know, FreeCamp is a really powerful tool that kind of has a ceiling. That said, in to just real quick touch on should we stay with Nation Builder, FreeCamp has built in CRM. So uh, content like it, so like Civi CRM. It has built in database management that can create walk sheets that can do all those kind of things that we can do with Nation Builder um, and fundraising in built into that other thing, um, built into the larger program. Um, Discord is very similar to Slack, except it offers a little more functionality. It's a lot of chats, team management, separating them out into subgroups, um, and being able to collaborate. Lumio is one I've never used. Lumio has polling and voting and proposals, which is a really interesting thing when I was looking into this and something I'd really like to try. Lumio is free, um, but most likely when I did my research it would cost us about $40 a month. It's open source, so if we had somebody who knew what they were doing, Lumio could be completely customized to everything we wanted to do. <coughs> do we have that person is a question, but um, part of that is that you get with open source and that kind of custom ability is it's a little less user friendly. Um, but it offers scheduling and calendars and um, different project management. And for me, when I'm especially with my work in the youth caucus, I'm really focused on trying to get direct democracy started within the caucus. Mm -hmm. And that polling is really cool. I really hope Basecamp, since that's what we're paying for, and we're committed to kind of sticking to, to try to keep, that's another thing people have problems with. We try something new, we don't like it, and we walk away. And we change every six months what we're doing, and we never take the time to learn something. So the youth caucus is committed to trying Base camp. It may not end up being our ultimate solution, but we're committed to a few years of it. Um, because once we started in it, about six months later, we went, oh, we totally like botched that launch. Though we totally misused all these tools, you know, and it wasn't that we were, it's just we didn't know enough about it when we started dumping hundreds of people into it. Um, and now we're, it's a much more effective tool for us, and we're trying to pull the people back. Um, so, you know, the project management stuff is the huge stuff. That's, you know, stopping having email listservs um, and how we actually do our work between calls. Um, and that's something that I really throughout the party and, you know, focus on myself as well with this criticism throughout the party that we have a problem that uh, it's our system almost seems to drive procrastination and drive not working until that next two week call. <laughs> um, you know, uh, that first week after the call, I don't check the ILGP chair email account very much. That happens the week before the meeting, um, so I can give an update. Um, you know, that's <clears> bad <throat> practice. Um, and it's, it's not exclusively because of how we do things, but how we do things kind of factors in. Um, so this project management stuff is the big changes to how can we try to engage in a day-to-day -day basis in this work? How can we make our, our work more directed and more efficient? Um, on my computer, I actually had pictures from Basecamp. Um, but what you'll see in Basecamp is essentially a series of boxes. One, like my youth caucus one starts with state, Illinois. That's all the youth members from Illinois are in that chat. And we can, fo and we, that chat is pretty dead. Um, unfortunately, but we there we have our own message boards, our own calendars, our own events, our own to-do lists that can be set up. You know, next to that is going to be national committee delegates of youth members. 
Next to that is going to be the accreditation committee, then the edu education committee. And every box has its own tools that can be customized and used different and its own membership lists. Um, so you can only be involved in what you want to be involved in. That's another problem in this party is the amount of data and information that is dumped on volunteers. <laughs> um, this allows a little bit more control over that. Um, you know, and so this is something, you know, I, I wanted to kind of present that it's out there and that we can have a on continuing ongoing conversation on. Um, I'm, I plan on setting up a free camp account just to mess with it um, because it, it really does seem like a powerful tool that more so the, than base camp because of its financial limitations could be really good for state and local parties and even campaigns at times. Um, so that's kind of the end of the big, you know, I wanted to end on the like, this is the game changing, completely change how we do things thing. Now I'm gonna move into things that we can use right now. Um, some of these I've even mentioned on, on this first list, I've even mentioned on exec calls. Um, for simple things like email, um, answering our emails. And how do we do that? How do we make sure when four people have access to that chair account that I'm not responding at the exact same time Rich is responding and we're double hitting people? How can we have that kind of efficient communication? When I, hmm. uh, I'm sure I'm driving Carolyn crazy in lead chair because I get all these obvious spam emails, but I feel compelled to send them to the treasurer. You know, it says, please pay this invoice. I don't remember the invoice, but I also don't know things that were billed with on a, you know, on a daily basis and it's coming to chair, so I just forward it. And, and every single time it's happened, Carolyn has said, you're right, that's spam. And I, it's this balancing act of my gut of spam, and, and when I was a national co-chair, we actually had our treasurer pay out to a spam. Um, yeah, they sent a like $4,800 check, and they posted the list and said, hey, I sent this $4,800 check, and I was the one that supposedly told them to do it, and I was most offended that they thought my writing was that bad in day-to-day -day emails. <laughs> um, you know, but the truth is someone went to our website where our national leadership was listed. They created a fake account with Chris Blankenhorn in the name. They emailed them, said, hey, you owe us for these services. And then they just kept emailing them over and over and over. And it almost, and it was a time when we had an interim treasurer because our treasurer had resigned. It almost seems like someone knew that fact. Yeah. Um, but they did. They just saw my name. They did not check with me. They did not check with the committee about notes. It was a bad fail on their part, and they sent it. And luckily, we were able to cancel the check Good. while it was in the mail. Um, but simple things like how to answer your email, um, we could do better, and we have we'd have problems with how we do it now. Um, so. Some of the uses of these three that are in this next one, um, two of them are for contacting your members, your volunteers, for managing communication. Um, Fresh Desk can also delegate communication. If an email comes in with a Fresh Desk, I can say, oh, Carolyn needs to see that, tag her, and it'll send it, it'll put it on her tab, her plate. Um, Hootsuite, the third one, is um, a pretty old and popular one, but it's for efficient social media work. So when you make a post, you don't have to post it on Facebook, and then go post it on Twitter, and then go post it on Instagram, and whatever the hell else the kids are using these days, and you can do it one time. You can have it in campaigns, you can get good analytics. Um, Hootsuite has great analytics, which is cool. Um, Fresh Desk can help us with efficient intra-organization intra communication. Call Hub can help us connect with people who we meet and who we want to activate. Um, so Freshdesk, the national party uses it. Every single email account that is attached to some administrative body in the national party comes into Freshdesk. If you mail, email ccc at gp.org, I think that's the, the, the email to get to their committee. But if you send an email there, it goes to Freshdesk. Someone goes in and says, make sure the CCC sees this. Um, if it comes to the media committee, committee's email, a press inquiry, it gets sent to them. Um, if it's a volunteer sign up, we actually go through and we send it to state parties. Um, so anytime I'm in our national fresh desk, which I still do sometimes, 
because I'm a glutton, and it's actually very fulfilling to answer emails on the national level, surprisingly. Um, I can, I have a folder that's just a laughing face, that that's those hate mail. I ha we, we've created a folder where when you're having a bad day, you can go into Fresh Desk and just get a chuckle out of some of the things that people send the National Party. Um, but it allows us in one space to communicate throughout the party to people around the country. Um, each email, each contact received is a ticket. Like it says, it is literally a customer service application. Um, but it can also be attached to your social media. It can attach to be Google, attached to Google Voice, um, so that people will get phone calls, or you can redirect phone calls. Um, it's free. The National Party is still using the free version of it. Um, but some things like call transferring and forwarding are premium, um, and I believe maybe social media is also premium. Um, it's also got cool analytic tools, so you can pit your volunteers against each other. Starlene is the only more efficient person in the National Party than me. <laughs> and what I mean by that is it tells me how many emails I've answered, how many tickets I've resolved, um, and it can help us in terms of staffing um, <coughs> actually maintain some metrics. Um, you know, it, are we actually getting through these things? At the National Party, I can tell you, we are not getting through our emails. Um, just too many come in on a day for, to be dealt with by the volunteer force that we have right now. Um, I talked a little bit about Hootsuite. Um, Hootsuite is specifically for social media. Um, you can monitor, create your own campaigns. You can, um, it's also free with premium upgrades. Um, in that case, things like issue trackers you can, if you pay for the issue tracker uh, tool, it will actually notify you when your keywords pop up specific places. Um, and so one of the things I've, I've learned through working with social media teams on things like Twitter, if the Washington Post posts something, if you can be one of the first responses, especially if you've got that little blue verified check mark after your name or your organization, if you can be one of the first ones in, you're going to get a huge amount of access. You're going to be the first thing people see. At, that's going to cause an increased number of people liking, retweeting, all those type of things. And it's going to keep you elevated as a, as a relevant topic. Um, it's going to keep bringing people to you. I'm not a, a, despite managing the social media for the Youth Caucus, I am not a big social media person in terms of the strategy behind it. Um, but for the people who I know, tell me that that first, even on Facebook, when you share something, if you've got 10 people who are going to share it, they need to share it almost immediately, within the first few minutes, or else Facebook's immediately going to start throttling you. They want, it, they, they want you to have that interaction. If you don't have that, inter you know, even if it's just liking and saying something back to someone, that greatly increases your reach, and Hootsuite helps with kind of bringing all of this for all of your social media into one place. So you're not bouncing from one to one, but you're, you have it all in one centralized location. Um, you know, that's going to be good for parties or campaigns. Call Hub is another one everyone's using them at the national level. Call Hub's, uh, there's got to be a catch. I, I haven't used it. There's got to be a catch. But the first 5,000 phone calls through Call Hub are free. After that, it's 1.6 cents per call. Text messaging, one point like seven cents per text message. Now you get charged if they reply, um, but you can also have automatic replies. You can have engagement. You can have, you know, text this. The, the whole thing you get from people: text this five-digit number at this number, and it'll do this thing. Call Hub can set that up for you. Mm -hmm. um, it allows you to create call lists through integration with Nation Builder or probably any other CRM you're using, any other database management system you're using. It can do robocalls. Um, I know a state senate candidate in Maryland is very specifically um, raising money for robocalls. Like he, it, it's something he's decided he wants to try, and he has a very specific, his name's Ryan Sullivan, and he has a very specific message that he is putting out and that he's running on and he wants to put it in, actually call people with it through ro robocalls. 
And I think that plan is part of Maryland and Baltimore's general testing of all of these type of tools and trying to figure it out. Um, Maryland and, and Baltimore in particular are a really strong and really innovative party. They're running a lot of people um, and they're running a lot of really solid people to win. Um, so uh, it, it's, they're, they're trying to utilize this system even more. Um, some of the paid stuff you can get is like auto dialers. So if you have a call, uh, if, you have, if you're you know, calling for a specific thing, not only can you create your own list and create scripts that your people sit, read off the computer, um, it can auto dial for them. You're done, hit, hit the button when you're ready for the next one. Um, you can make notes, which then transfer into Nation Builder and stay with those contacts. Um, it's FCC compliant and, it's, and FEC compliant and it's browser based. So that means you don't have to install a program, you don't have to install an app, you go to a website, log in, and, it, and the administration side will put you to the right place. Um, so for instance, the, the Ballot Access Committee nationally has used this tool um, to call looking for petition signers in states. Um, and you can, and that, with that first 5,000 free, um, you know, I, this is one of those tools that like every campaign should at least use up their 5,000 calls. <laughs> you know, why not? Um, and then after that, you know, there's different levels of billing per what you're doing. Um, but it is a really accessible and user-friendly um, system. And I'm hoping that as part of my compiling more, more resources for this, um, I can get Starlene Rankin from National Party um, who does the call hub organizing. She's the one who's writing the scripts, who's getting the people plugged in, who's making the call lists. I'm hoping she can help get a short, you know, hopefully five to 15 minute video about how to actually um, run this system. But it is relatively straightforward and, and uh, plugs into Nation Builder, which is huge um, as long as we keep using it. So a few <coughs> other Nation Builder add-ons. Um, one, two, three, form builder, do gooder, and caring sense. These all do way different things. One, two, three, form builder is literally as boring as it sounds. It's creating custom forms. Um, I remember when I discovered Google Forms, and I was like, "This is amazing!" Like the form goes into a spreadsheet. Like it's it's all automated. Mm. One, two, three, Still form builder is that on steroids. When you respond to a question, it can pop up subjective responses to that. Follow-up questions. You said yes, you said no, you said maybe. There's a different one that pops up for each one. Oh. So it can give you very dynamic forms. It's completely integrated into Nation Builder. Um, I might have to pay a little for that service, I'm not sure. Um, but it integrates in with Nation Builder, so that means that all of this form data is being properly put into our database and giving us huge amounts of, I mean, it's almost too much information what I get from a volunteer form from the Green Party of the United States. They, people want to work on everything and they've got this huge list of things. <laughs> we're I think we're collecting too much, um, but it gives you this really cool ability to do this, uh, to, to collect data. Do-gooder um, and Caring Sense both give you um, kind of action items for member engagement. Um, and we'll get into that, we'll get into those specifics in a minute. And then 123 Form Builder and Do Good are, are great for surveys, petitions, fundraising, and kind of di digital based activism. Um, the benefits out of 123 Form Builder, as I said, I think we're collecting too much, but it allows you to really get into the nitty gritty and try to <coughs> find that piece of information that you need. Um, and so it, whether that be an issue campaign or a candidate wanting to know where they should stand on a position, um, you can kind of get deep into some of those things, deeper than you can get more efficiently through a Google form. Because um, a lot of this could probably could be reproduced free through Nation Builder's existing forms or through that, but this is a very powerful tool. Um, and then you can do good earnings caring sense give you a lot of app opportunities to engage. Um, I've covered most of one, two, three, form builder. Um, so, you know, it's custom survey and form creation. 
It's got all kinds of automation options where it goes into your database. It integrates with about anything, uh, including social media. So social media surveys, um, that's something I, I don't see us, I don't know if Nate Bates from Builder can do it or not, but what I don't see us doing is when we create a survey on our social media, those responses should be recorded as, you know, something, we're interacting with our members, um, and so we need to keep that interaction. We need to be able to kind of use that in our work. Do-gooder is really, really cool. I actually yesterday sent an email to the media committee, steering committee liaison, and said, Gloria, are we using do-gooder? Because <coughs> we should have a Kavanaugh do-gooder petition. Do-gooder is a petition service. Um, starts out at $40 a month. That's what the, the National Party, I believe, pays for. Um, at the most basic level, it's like a nation builder petition. You can send a petition, please sign this. Personally, I think that the Green Party should do, be doing a lot more of those, if for no other reason than list creation, than list curation. Getting contact information from people who are on our side on things who we have never met before. It's something we need to do as a party. Um, we learned that when we had a paid uh, fundraiser. She literally called every person who had donated the, a certain amount to the party within a certain period of time. We've tapped our capacity, which means we have to be able to expand our capacity. And do-gooder is a way to do that. Where do-gooder is different from a nation builder survey, which you can absolutely do, and do-gooder does integrate with nation builder, when you get those emails that say call or email your senator, do-gooder is how you do that. It is one of the services that can do that. You can call any representative based on your zip code. You can set it down to state level, local level. You can call decision makers, such as business owners. Um, you can really set it up to target a lot of people, and I'm surprised that the Youth Caucus has not abused ours yet, because we've had some ideas about people to target. <laughs> but, <laughs> that, that would be fun, but questionable ethics, um, which is why we haven't done them. Um, but it's a really cool tool. And you can't do that with Form Builder? No. Okay. No. So the real, you know, the main thing, form, you know, you can create petitions with both, mm -hmm. but the main thing that you can do with Do Gooder is that contacting people, that action step in. You can create draft email template emails, template scripts for the calls, it will auto call, it'll give them the number or they can click and call from the phone. It'll auto generate that email, all they have to do, they're providing the email anyway, uh, their email address anyway to sign the petition. So it auto, auto generates that email out um, and they have the opportunity to edit it and personalize it. Um, and it says that it's from their email. Um, so that's a, it's a way that we can kind of take these petitions to an actual action level um, and one of the reasons I've encouraged the media committee to do one on Kavanaugh is to have a broader conversation than Stop Kavanaugh. There's a million Stop Kavanaugh petitions out there. I've never seen one that was even Stop Kavanaugh and everyone like him. <laughs> There's another one in the wings. <laughs> and, I mean, well, was it Merrick that Obama... Yeah. 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 Merrick Garland. Yeah. So you don't even, even from the Democratic side, we're gonna get a right-wing pro-corporatist person in that city or that Supreme Court seat. So that was one one area where I, had, I why I emailed Gloria was to say we can expand the narrative on this. We can be one of the only petitions out there, and we can have people actually calling their senators, not just saying stop Kavanaugh, but stop Kavanaugh and stop everyone like him or other demands that we might have, other positions we might have. Corporate capture, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> um, so it's, yeah. I really like do gooder for the national party. Um, $40 a month is a great expense, in my opinion. Um, even if nothing else than the list curation possibilities, they're under using it to the point I would like to see them start offering it. They have five active campaigns available, I think, in our, in our plan. Um, the Youth Caucus controls one of them because we funded it. Um, but I would like to see them offering it out to state and local parties for things like, was it boss is not going to go to the debate? Mm -hmm. yeah. Let's start calling boss. Um, you know, so that, that's something that do-gooder can set up. 
is have people not just from you could could have it be just from your district, but you could also in in uh, media it's often often called monstering, but you do gooder enables that kind of mass digital action to just flood someone's phones. Um, I don't know what service John Oliver used to break the F the FCC, but it was one like do gooder. It may have been a competitor. But when he had his thing, you know, everyone emailed the FCC and then it literally it shut the server down, he used a service like this. Um, and it is as accessible as $40 a month. Caring Sense is another one that um, the National Party uses both of its main tools. Um, Caring Sense is micro fundraising, small repeatable donations. Um, they have two types. One, the first one is Rally Give. Um, and it's small donations attached to trackable <coughs> goals. So the Green Party US has a current rally give program going on where every time Trump tweets about these specific topics, we get money. <coughs> and it may be 10 cents a tweet. I don't, I don't know, and people can set their own cents. People can cap it, because when, when they pitched it to us, my first thing was like, if we're doing Trump tweets, like, you're going to cost me a lot of money. <laughs> money that I have. Yeah. And I was, I was reassured, no, we can set a cap. Um, you know, and, and, we, and there was a lot of disagreement over Trump tweets being the main thing. Um, you know, there were justifiable concerns about centering Trump versus centering the system. But in the reality is, the reality about this is Caring Sense and micro fundraising is not a fundraising foundation. It's a supplemental tool, and so we use those tweets as a test of this system. Um, and it's made us like a hundred bucks in a month. Nothing crazy, but that's a lot of literature for a campaign. You know, that's some paid petitioners. That's it's not nothing. Um, it's not nothing for a small. You know, as long as it only takes up a small portion of your actual fundraising strategy. Um, the other one that we use is called Swipe Give. Swipe Give is what all these not-for-profits use that says, round up. You spend $3.25, donate the 75 cents to us, minus fees. Um, and so Caring Sense also does that. Um, the interest in it integrates with Nation Builder and is F FEC compliant. Um, the interesting thing about it is that it's another, again, another way to give people to regular involvement, even the little things. Um, you know, another, another issue I see with kind of the ongoing work of our party, um, like I said, with conference calls, it's, I call, I have a call this Sunday, then I don't have anything for two weeks, and I don't have it. In your local, that's usually a month. Um, and that means that most members are not on a day-to-day -day basis engaging in the work of the party. Um, and these, way, these ways give people these tiny little ways that they can be reminded, or the, and um, rally give, you can track and send out you know, updates. And one thing that when, we, when I was talking to Michael Dennis about rally give that I came up with was doors knocked. A penny a door. However much, I don't know the metrics, that's gonna take a fundraising person to figure out, but that is a trackable thing that is really important to campaigns and to garnering campaign support by showing that you're doing it. So you can have, you know, pay us per door or pay us per 10 or pay us per 100, and you'll get emails every time saying, you know, oh, we hit 1,500, oh, we're at 2,500, and it'll give those, it, the campaign can give those consistent updates, and it can show people what they're getting for their money, because a lot of the times people don't feel like they see anything for their money. Um, and then a few other ones that I wanted to touch on. Um, over there, I also I have a sheet or a set a packet of sheets. These were called from a much larger list that I've been creating, um, and the the actual raw data document that I have is even larger than the nice put together ones I have over there. Um, but this last group are ones that I wanted to just bring up. Um, 
you know, that there are whole categories and there are competitors to them that are worth having a conversation about. But if we're not looking at some of these things, um, we're missing kind of some opportunities. So I wanted to get these three in. Um, <coughs> skip that real quick. Google Drive. You're seeing it right now. Mm -hmm. um, this is not Microsoft <coughs> PowerPoint. This is Google Drive. Um, it's got an incredibly broad and powerful set of tools, whether it be docs for write, collect, collaborative writing. Um, I remember freaking out in 2011, the first time I used Google Docs, and we were writing a, uh, we were writing bylaws for the organization we were founding, and I was typing as we were talking, and then all of a sudden it started moving below me, and I went, what the hell is that? <laughs> and I realized it's not that everyone can just see it, Everyone can be involved at the same time. Um, another really cool thing that they've added rec in recent years is commenting and suggestions. So when we're draft writing a press release, how it happens a lot in the party is a, m a million emails with a million different ver versions of a document in the text of the email. Mm -hmm. And you're, I, I personally am always questioning whether I have the most recent. Um, Google Docs allows a link to be shared that always has the most recent. It allows threaded comments on e you highlight an area that you want to comment on, right click, click comment, and you can have full conversations to kind of suss out where, how this area is gonna fall. Um, another big one for me as a person who stream of thought writes and does not get back to grammatical editing till the very end, um, and someone who works very closely with uh, North Carolina Chair Michael Trudeau, who is a copy editor um, and constantly shaming me, <laughs> is that when, when I have written something that just is incorrect, Michael highlights it and corrects it, and all I have to do is say, I accept Michael's suggestion. I don't have to retype it. It no. just does it. So it's, you know, Docs is a really strong collaborative collaboration tool. Sheets is their Excel and you can have things like their forms feeding directly into Sheets. Sheets can do, go in creating graphs, all kinds of things like Excel, Excel can do. Um, Keep is their free to-do list. Uh, my wife and I use Keep just for thing, like, things that need done this weekend. It's on both of our phones, and when I check that I did something, she knows not to do it. Um, hmm. It started with me using it, and then I sent her a grocery list once, and it, now we both use it. Um, another powerful thing about Drive is link sharing. Um, at the end of this, you'll see a link, and on the bottom of my sheets back there, you'll see a link. It is from Bitly. I'm going to do. I'm going to. Oh, it's a touch screen. No. I'm sorry. Is this a touch screen? Uh, or did I just shake it by touching? The you screen? might have shaken it. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Um, I'm going to jump over to Bitly real quick. Um, but Google Drive lets you create shareable links. And you can control other people can comment or edit or just view it. Keeps doing it. Um, but uh, Bitly, if you look at the bottom of that sheet, or I'll just do it now, I guess, the link down here, if you type in bit.ly slash dot for digital organizing tools info, it'll take you to the files that I have, the sheets that I have, a folder with this presentation and other resources on it. If I were to use, I could have used the ILGP site if I knew how to make an ILGP page, or if I knew how to make a page on Nation Builder and had the time to learn how to do that before today, I would have done that, but I don't. The websites I do have, can, I do have access to are things like um, the Young Greens or the Sangamo Greens or my own CM Blankenhorn, all of which are super long. Um, as someone with the last name Blankenhorn, it's really hard for me to do really succinct like links and things like that. So this allowed me to create something very simple. Um, when Google Docs creates a link, it's this big long thing that you're never going to remember and that no one should ever be asked to type into a browser. <laughs> um, yeah. And people do it. People leave the Google, I've seen presentations where it's like, go here, and they expected us to write one by one. This allows me to get a very simple link. That's about all it does. It offers some good analytics, but allows you the ability to have customized short links for free. Um, so when I make flyers for events, you'll often see a bit.ly at the bottom. 
because it's easier for me to do that than to use whatever long name we have. Um, I use it for school. Um, when parents want digital copies of some of the work that I'm sending home, I just write down a bit.ly link because it saves me from having to email them, it saves me them from having to try to type something in or use a QR code, something super simple, and it, like those are just called writing masters. They go there, they get their the writing master sheets for their three-year-olds to learn to write. Um, so that's really simple, but useful tool. There's been a number of times where, especially as a graphic in graphic design work, it's literally saved my life in terms of layout and design. The last one is one that I have a troubled relationship with. I use Photoshop in all of my work, so Canva drives me crazy because my youth caucus comrades produce these amazing graphics in Canva and they can't give me source files like someone else who uses Photoshop would. Um, I'm at the point where I'm even telling them, I have an illegal cracked copy of Photoshop, I'll give it to you, just stop using Canva. <laughs> but that's about my comfort working in my tools. Um, the reality about Canva, it is free and browser-based graphic design. You don't have to buy anything. You can download an app or do it on the internet, and it's really, really simple um, photo editing, graphic design, that kind of thing. Um, you know, I things like the Youth Caucus's We Are Eco Socialists logo have come out of Canva. A lot of the things that you see on the Youth Caucus producing is coming out of Canva. If it's not, if it's Photoshop, it's me. Um, a lot of it's very drag and drop, you know, filters and all those kind of things. But it is a, and there are other options like Pixlr, but Canva is a very popular and um, very powerful tool that's free. Um, you know, I, getting my cracked copy of Photoshop to work on your computer is a, a little bit of a hassle. Adobe doesn't make it easy. Um, Canva starts right away. You know, it, it, so it's not as powerful as, as uh, some of the Adobe tools or things like that. Um, but for producing a meme for social media, for getting a real, and you know, so Randy's at a campaign event, one of your staff members can click it, they can overlay graphics, they can do it all from their phone and post direct, and it, and it, can, and it has built-in dimensions for social media stuff like headers. Um, so that's where it's at. I could take that same picture and probably do it a little better, prettier, crisper in Photoshop, but you're gonna have to wait for me to go home, have the time to sit at my computer, and have the time to do editing. Canva allows you at the touch of your finger to do a whole lot of pretty powerful editing and get it out there really, really fast. Um, so that's, you know, that's another one. If you don't have a graphic designer, Canva is a good place to start. Um, most people can get things worked out pretty quickly in Canva. Um, so that's all I have. Like I said, it was a huge dump of lots of different tools and they're nowhere near all of them that I've worked out. I'm hoping to get this, um, I know I'm gonna do it again for the Youth Caucus. I'm hoping to do it for a few others and I'm hoping that I can start either myself or working with people get some very specific tutorials down on some things. Um, if you have any questions, you can find me, Chris Blankenhorn on Facebook. Again, my name is Chris Blankenhorn, so the easiest email I can give you is my gp.org one, which is just chris at gp.org. Um, and then you can go to bit.bit.li backslash dot info um, to get the general um, resources for this, including the slideshow or this PowerPoint. Um, you know, if someone wanted to, I would, uh, like Rich, providing notice and my faith in my 25-year-old truck's ability to do the distance, um, I would be happy to come and talk about this broadly or very specifically. Um, you know, I would be happy to work with different groups on um, what of my lists are you actually interested in, and instead of covering 20 in an hour, let's cover four and actually get into how it works and how we might be able to use this in a little more discussion, um, you know, about how this might be effective. Um, so I'd be happy to come and help with any of those kind of things, do any of those kind of things.